Well, I tell you that movie is a must watch. So moving on now to the spotlight segment and sitting in the spotlight is female disc jockey talking about DJ Copy. Now let's meet her. Florence Otedola, popularly known as DJ Copy, is gradually making her mark in the very dynamic Nigerian music industry. After years of practicing in the UK, the Nigerian-born disc jockey picked her moniker from her favorite snack. Growing up, I've always been obsessed with cupcakes and my friends used to call me Cupcake. So when I decided to get into DJing and I was thinking of a name, um, Cupcake came very naturally to me. So I, I sort of, I would go by DJ Cupcake, but I would say, you know, towards my journey as a DJ and sort of developing my career, I thought to myself, you know, do I really want to be called DJ Cupcake? I mean, friends were already calling me Cubs, Cuppy, Cupito. So naturally, I guess um, Cuppy was really my first choice. And so I dropped the cake, dropped the DJ, and here I am, Cuppy. Love for DJing is birthed by a first love for music. Um, I have to say I've always had a passion for music from a from a very young age. In fact, um, I mean, in terms of the way I grew up, I was a very, very, very vibrant, cheerful child. And you know, I remember listening to Fela back in the day when I was seven, and I couldn't even understand what was happening. You know, it's really just music is so powerful. And I think from a young age, I just really got overwhelmed by the power of music. Um, so I think sort of listening to music and being, being someone that followed it very, very, very carefully. Um, when I started going out with friends, you know, I, I, would, I would always notice these were my early teenage years. Why is the DJ always a man? You know, what is it that us females can't do that is preventing us? Or why is it that us women don't want to be DJs? And being the rebel that I am, I decided I was going to figure this whole thing out. And at the age of 16, the 21-year-old begins her fashion fueled desire to be a DJ with practice. Well, I actually, I taught myself. So at 16, I bought myself some second-hand decks. And, you know, I decided that I was going to teach myself, you know, I would go on YouTube, I would, when I go out, I would stand by the DJ booth for six hours watching what the DJ was doing, you know, it's something that, that I, I just became almost obsessed with and, you know, practice, like they say, makes perfect and, you know, I just sat down and I, I constantly taught myself and I would beg friends, I remember my friends were turning sort of 16, 17 at this time and I'd be like, please let me do your birthday party um, or, you know, friends that maybe had, had had parties in clubs or whatever. I'd be like, please let me, let me, let me play for five minutes. So they would let me play and literally it would be maybe eight o'clock when the club is empty. But, you know, I would DJ like there's a million people in there and, you know, it was just really, I would say, incremental steps. I think, you know, I think possibly, I'm sure a lot of DJs thought I was ready. It's like, what's this girl doing? Just standing there, staring at what I'm doing. You know, my friends would almost not want to invite me out because if we, if we, if we, if we ever went out, I would end up just by the DJ decks, um, you know, at, by the booth, watching what was being done. Um, you know, I think it's always, and this is my own personal belief, that when you're doing something that is, you know, that is epic or is that something that's different or great. And, you know, this is relative to me. For me, my dreams are almost bigger than me. I think that, you know, I'm, I'm very excited about my project, but I'm also very much doing something that's very ambitious for myself. And I think when you do something like that, there's not always, you always have to be brave and you always will have to be fearless. So there's always going to be people that think you're a bit weird or people that don't understand why you're, you know, constantly pushing yourself. But it's, you know, I, I, I also always say that you're responsible for your own happiness.
a graduate of law from the King's College London, with the backing of a Forbes-listed billionaire father, Copy's desire to be an entertainer comes across as a little word. She, however, is ready to surmount external pressure to achieve her hot desire. You know, it's very, very easy to get distracted by all the background um, elements, you know, of when, when someone has, in a project like mine that is, I believe, very exciting, you know, um, it's very easy to maybe get distracted by um, personal life or family life, you know, I not really focus on the actual content itself. You know, I think that time tells all and, you know, I take my work very seriously. Um, and I feel like I feel like everyone has platforms. Some people have big platforms, some people have smaller platforms. But the secret and I think really the the, the focal point is execution. I wouldn't have jobs to do if I wasn't good at what I did. You know, yes, some people have platforms, but platforms and connections can only get you as far as they can get you. You know, after a while, if you're not talented and if you don't do what you do well, then you know you won't have you won't have demand. You won't have anything to do, and you won't even grow or develop as a brand. Um, you know, I have to say that I I have such supportive parents, like I said, and I feel like um, apart from obviously getting their their, their supports, I also get their pressure. You know, my parents are very, very hard on me to be the best version of me. I mean, my father is someone I look up to very much. Flying up on her CV is the remake of Tsunji Oyelana's I Love My Country, which eventually earned her a tourism ambassadorial honor. You know, I have to say that, um, yes, I did, when I was in the studio, I did try a number of different records. You know, I mean, I guess it's two things. First of all, there's songs that I feel like we essentially shouldn't be touched, you know. I mean, I Love My Country by Tunji Oriolano is a great song, but it's also very much, it, it's, it's, I think it's got a very wide, I, I think it's got a lot of room. So, I mean, I'm going to be quite technical here. When you look at house remixing, which is something that I do a lot with Nigerian music, when you think of fusing, um, originals with new sounds or even just the idea of fusing you know more your Western sounds with Nigerian music you have to think about how the song is structured and really whether or not there's space or there's an opportunity to interpret it in a different way and you know with I love my country it's such a powerful song it's such a beautiful song and you know just having having those words I love my country I just felt like you know, anyone could identify with it, not only just Nigerians, but really anyone around the world. And um, so that was really, that was the song of my choice. And um, I'm, I'm so happy I did it. I love my country is followed up by the House of Copy mixtape, which infuses some electronic sound into some already popular Nigerian songs. Um, when it comes to staying on top of, you know, on top of music in Nigeria, or staying on top of really our, our actual, our original sound here in Nigeria, or we can even say in Africa. I think because I'm Nigerian and because I'm so passionate about my country and also I'm passionate about my heritage, 
it only comes natural to me you know when not only do i try and obviously like you said fuse different western sounds and bring them to nigeria to sort of try and create essentially you know a new a new sound i also try to or i do actually i make sure i take a piece of home with me everywhere so when i'm playing around the world you know i'm not only playing what is popular there i'm also promoting you know sounds from home and i think having that sort of synergy between you know different different i would say different locations continents countries you know um, I think that really helps me in terms of not not forgetting the kind of sound that real Nigeria has and real Africa has. You know, because we've seen Nigerian music itself change. You know, naturally we're, we're, we're hearing more Western influence. Naturally we're seeing a lot of artists try and experiment more. I think people's, people's minds are, are opening up to new sounds. You know, and that it, this is in different uh, mediums. We look at things like our literature, we look at things like art, we look at many different creative formats where we're seeing a fusion of this. So, um, you know, I, I just make sure that I, 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 I am an advocate for Nigeria and, you know, in all I do, in all, in all different, I guess, in all different ways I conduct my work, whether that's producing music, whether that's actually DJing, or whether that's genuinely being, you know, an individual that is that is holding a, a, a Nigerian flag high. Um, they've allowed me to interpret their music, which I'm so excited about. Um, so I've been able to do this and I guess put this African, this very, very Afrobeat sound, but on a different medium, which is more house, more techno. And, you know, I'm very excited about the project. Um, I launched it in London on the 25th of July. Um, I have to say, working with um, certain artists on House of Copy has been um, so exciting because these are people that I've looked up to and these are people that I would never imagine ever working with. So I'm, I feel so honored. Um, you know, and I've just, I guess from House of Copy, I've learned things. I think, I think my whole project is a journey and, you know, there's always things to learn from, things I could have done better. You know, and in terms of the artists, um, you know, I would say that it's 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 a planning thing. You have to plan ahead to maximize on things. You know, I believe that if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Florence or Tedola may only be 21, a ripe age for some exuberances considering her privileged background. She has however wowed many with her relentless pursuit of her passion. <laughs> 